Let's jump right into the main story of this Blurred Breakdown, and that is Bodomeo versus Disney. Now, shortly after X-Men 97 premiered on Disney+, Plus, head writer Bodomeo was unceremoniously fired by Marvel Studios. Interviews that had already been scheduled with the press were canceled, and rumors started swirling about his dismissal. For example, we'd heard he'd been an absolute nightmare to deal with on a daily basis, with it later being alleged that DeMeo's non-nude OnlyFans account raised concerns with Disney higher-ups. Apparently, they found his behavior on the platform unsettling and creepy. DeMeo initially remained silent, but soon started answering fan questions on X, breaking down key creative decisions in episodes of X-Men 97, offering some undeniably fascinating insights into the making of the Disney Plus series, uh, which followed a lot of those, if not all of them. Uh, his breakdown specifically of, uh, you know, Remember Me, or Remember It, and how that was supposed to be an allegory for, uh, you know, the 90s, and, you know, and specifically the transition of the safety of the 90s for the first few episodes, uh, and the nostalgia, and the 9-11 happens, and what that meant for how people started moving about the world, how politics changed and all that. I thought that was an incredible breakdown. So, honestly, I thought that was good. However, the writer who also worked on Moon Knight and Blade for the Marvel Studios, also made it clear that he'd have no involvement with season two beyond what he had already contributed, all while stopping short of revealing exactly why he and Disney parted ways. DeMeo has recently taken some shots at Disney and Marvel Studios for excluding him from X-Men 97's Emmy campaign, and in an explosive social media post, he may have shed some light onto why he was really fired. Now, the writer claims that he that after he shared some X-Men fan art, which you can see here, depicting him as a scantily clad Cyclops, Marvel Studios sent a letter notifying me that they had stripped me of my season two credit due to a post. Sadly, this is the latest in a troubling pattern I suffered while working on X-Men 97 in Blade, he said. Um, I am have to, I'll have more to say about it soon, but I first got to take a break from social media to find a safer place for me to post about it. Proud, nerdy. Uh, proud, out, and nerdy, he says. Now, Marvel Studios, a studio that rarely issues statements about what happens behind the scenes, has hit back at DeMeo, pointing to egregious misconduct being the reason for the initial March 2024 firing. Mr. DeMeo was terminated in March 2024 following an internal investigation, the studio told The Hollywood Reporter. Given the egregious nature of the findings, we severed ties with him immediately, and he has no further affiliation with Marvel. The trade has since shared further insights from inside sources, revealing that following his exit, and this is why it sounds like he lost his season two credits, but following his exit, an agreement was reached between the two parties over the issue of tweeting about the show, something that DeMeo has continued to occasionally do. In light of the breaches, his credit for season two was removed. So it sounds like uh, as they had parted ways, the contract that they kind of signed was, all right, you're not going to be talking about the show. Like, you're obviously, you created all that, but if we're going separate way, don't tweet about stuff, don't anything. And the funny thing is, I'm sure some of the plot stuff is one thing. I think anytime he started taking swipes, then maybe Disney got a little pissed off about that. But uh, while no details, they, they continue to say, while no details of the cause of termination or internal reviews have surfaced, sources say it involves sexual misconduct. Now, Marvel Studios is no longer holding back, and it appears uh, DeMeo's repeated tweet-alongs were the reason for him losing his season two credit. If we had to hazard a guess, that came after an unlikely uh, that came after a likely agreement about him no longer sharing unofficial reveals and insights, which saw his name appear in headlines week after week. The trade alluded to the egregious nature of his behavior being alleged sexual misconduct. However, it's Jeff Snyder who has decided to elaborate on what reportedly happened during DeMeo's time in charge of the show. It's claimed that DeMeo sent nude photos of himself in sexually suggestive hero poses to several young male staffers working on X-Men 97. His excuse was that they could use it as an inspiration for the animated series. The head writer was told to stop sending these photos, but allegedly continued. Snyder also claims that DeMeo groped an assistant on multiple occasions and was considered emotionally and physically abusive towards staffers. More details can be found about this on his newsletter, The Insnyder, uh, and it appears DeMeo has chosen this, is, this as a hill to die on. As you can see in some of these other tweets, he says the truth will be revealed. After their Disney Plus disaster, Marvel wants to mislead with alleged contract breaches over tweets. It's tragic. And then this is their usual playbook, legal letters as well as other items to prove a long-standing pattern to follow. 
it's about finding a safe outlet. Thanks for your faith and patience. So not really directly um, addressing the, the stuff that Snyder brought up because that wasn't brought up by Disney per se. That was released by Snyder as far as his inside scoop. We don't know if it's true or not. However, Brian Friedman DeMeo's lawyer, who in the past few years has sued Disney on behalf of such clients as former ESPN broadcaster Sage Steele, told Deadline this. Having much experience with Disney, the playbook is always the same. Family friendly on the outside, but secretly attempting to plant illegal, unconscionable items in contracts that silence the truth and stop the employee slash customer from asserting basic constitutional rights. As we will explain through detailed examples, which we will roll out in detail one by one, Disney's model is very clear and a repetitive illegal pattern. Once it gets challenged or exposed, the gaslighting and redirection of the blame toward anyone willing to tell the truth starts through an intentional, well-oiled publicity machine. The problem for Disney is that when they go up against someone who is concrete evidence of this happening over 100 times, many of which have led to them settling hundreds of cases, if not thousands, to try and continue to control critics, employees, and even lawyers who sue them. The problem for them is that I have the evidence and clients willing to be truthful, and they know it. These are actual facts, not argument or conjecture. Over the next few months, with the brave help of those who have been illegally silenced, retaliated for simply telling the truth, and then destroyed for it, one by one, this bullying and illegal conduct will be exposed to the government. Bodomeo wants nothing more from Marvel or Disney except the truth. He will bravely tell the truth. So will I. Stand by. That is a lot to unpack. Okay, first of all, uh, it's, I think it's as simple to say as this. If you're not familiar with the Disney Plus stuff, uh, bringing up a customer, what that was specifically about, you can go and check it out. I know uh, Philip DeFranco here on YouTube is a big news guy. I love watching his stuff. Uh, he covered this on, I believe, his Wednesday show. But if you go ahead and Google the story, there was a family that went to uh, one of the Disney parks. They were at one of the Disney restaurants. The wife had a nut allergy and specifically asked to make sure, you know, my food does not have nuts on it, et cetera, et cetera. They were told three, four times over, no, your food was handled with care. There's no nuts in it. There were nuts in it and she died. But the husband then went to go and try and sue Disney, um, you know, for, you know, negligent death, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's when it came up that apparently when you sign your terms and conditions of Disney Plus... You actually have something in that contract that you signed that says that if you are harmed by Disney in any way, uh, whether it be at their parks or whatever, that you actually agree to third party arbitration and not to actually take them to court. And it, that has been blowing up recently and driving people crazy uh, hearing all this because that's an insane thing to do. That is insane that if I sign up for your streaming service, that if I get hurt on a roller coaster at your park, I can't take action. That, <laughs> that if I go to see, you know, Thunderbolts, or I go see Captain America Brave New World in a theater and something happens because of like some crazy, I, I can't sue you. None of this makes sense. That's the most ridiculous, egregious thing to do, but it reminds me fully of the Sentai Pad episode of South Park. If you're not familiar with that, there's a very uh, funny, pretty famous episode about people not reading terms and conditions where all everybody uh, you know, wants to get iPads and Kyle gets one, but he doesn't read the iTunes terms and conditions, so he ends up getting kidnapped and forced into a human centipede, uh, but instead a human Sentai Pad scenario. And when they go to try and fight it, it's like, well, he signed for it. He, you know, it is what it is. So on the one hand, it's a little funny to see the South Park prediction come true. But on the other hand, it is, and more importantly, it's just disgusting and gross that this poor family. I bring all that to say you are now seeing uh, you had Victoria Alonzo and then this Disney Plus thing that kind of happened. But then Bo here. Now, if Bo did these things. DeMeo genuinely was sending, you know, nude, like essentially nude photos of himself to young staffers. If, if he was sexually, uh, you know, assaulting or groping random folks in the office or anywhere, honestly, then I'm sorry. You, you don't get your job back. You don't get to sue. Like, that's effed up. If there's true evidence that that's what was going on, then nope. That's 
there's no coming back. But but if there's any of this that's any sort of stretch or making stuff up or whatever, that's that's effed up pretty bad. Um, I think the thing that'll be the most interesting about this, though, it seems that it was going to be a bad look for Disney regardless about doing this. And, and I read another report somewhere that supposedly Bo was let go from The Witcher for uh, similar behavior as far as like talking out and things like that. I don't know about it, about it sending nude photos or harassing anybody, but as far as like constantly bad mouthing and talking out on The Witcher, so there's also a conversation about Brad Winterbaum being, you know, maybe not doing as much due diligence. And so within the, the Marvel, I've, again, I read this, I want to believe on Variety or, or Hollywood Reporter, one of the two, about the idea of not the, the blame not being on Kevin at all, but then uh, mainly because Brad didn't maybe do his due diligence um, on Bo and why he left The Witcher in the first place. But all that being said, it is going to be a very interesting scenario of how this plays out step by step here. If any of what Snyder is saying is true, that's pretty damning evidence to start your case of Disney wrongfully terminated me for things. That's that's not great. But at the same time, if this is some sort of ugly smear campaign, because there was, again, the back forth with Victoria Alonso of this idea of, you know, oh, Disney saying she was out here abusing uh, you know, post-production people and putting them through grueling hours and, and being abusive and all that kind of stuff. And Victoria and her team was saying, well, we, as, you know, as a queer woman, the idea of her speaking out against the Don't Say Gay Bill while Disney was already kind of having their tussle back and forth with Ron DeSantis in Florida, that that was the reasoning that they were terminated. Uh, I need to circle back around and see if anything else has come out about that. I haven't seen anything in the major headlines recently. So you do have two instances now of, Two queer people of color in high up positions being let go. And so, but then again, the question becomes because it feels like this weird pattern here is it because they genuinely were bad people that did bad things? And so Disney is like doing the right thing and being like, nah, y'all gotta, y'all gotta go. Or is it a situation of, again, a smear campaign? It's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but they, they look similar enough. To, to with some of the, the 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 Venn diagram of what these are that it's like wow okay once is an instance twice is a coincidence three times is a pattern with this being the second time you're getting closer and closer to the idea of a pattern but who knows who genuinely knows I want to know what you think based off of what you've heard so far what you're seeing do you think that Bo was wrongfully terminated and Disney's up to some stuff or do you think that you know the stuff that Cider talked about sounds true to you like, where do you think this whole thing kind of sits? Because it is a very complicated mess. I'll definitely be sure to be talking about it more um, as more news comes out. Remember, everything that was said here is allegedly, and this was a reporter from The Hollywood Reporter, uh, Variety, and Comic Book News. Uh, Comic Book Movie News, if you want to check out the articles directly. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments. <laughs>